Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as we take the plans drawn in the previous video with TurboCAD of a foam board F4. We'll go ahead and build it in this video and take it for test flight. Let's get to it. The F-4 Phantom is an iconic Air Force Navy Marine Corps fighter from the 60s and 70s. Distinctive uh, fuselage profile, uh, anhedral and tail wings, it'll make for an interesting RC model. In my previous video, I'll put a card up here. I went through the process using TurboCAD to draw a set of F-4 plans using a 3-view from the internet. So um, you can take a look at that. I highly recommend TurboCAD. It's a great, affordable home CAD program. It just allows somebody to do something like this. Because I have TurboCAD on my computer, I can print out the plans full size. So here's a fuselage. So it'll be a profile fuselage. Again, the plan is to make it three channels with elevator, ailerons, but no rudder control on this model. Also, here is the top view, and this will be used to make the wing the distinctive um, dihedral uh, out of the mid two-thirds section of the wing will be in place. So from here to here will be a solid piece of foam with an airfoil shape. And I'll figure out what to do with these uh, end pieces at a later time. And here's the stabilizer with the elevators uh, shown here. As I mentioned in the TurboCAD brief on drawing the plans, I'm using this as a template for what, what the F4 will look like. This model is very successful. We'll take a quick look now to show how it flies. This model uses the parts on equipment. It's a 24 inch wingspan, about a six inch, about a four inch cord, three channels with rudder, elevator, and throttle. Again, for the F4, we'll be using the elevator and the ailerons so will provide a little bit more positive roll control, just where the rudder is and, and the shorter wingspan of the F4. The foam allows for a very quick build so we can take on a project like this. And also weight is the key. This model weighed 1.7 ounces. That's one of the things that allowed it to, to fly very well. Even then, I had to add some washers to keep it the, the center of gravity in the proper place. Because the weight is so important, I highly recommend a, a digital scale. Now this measure, measures down to a tenth of an ounce. Tenths of, tenths of an ounce is important. That way you can uh, see how your build is going to get an idea of success for these smaller models. The other thing we can take a look at is we can overlay this model over the wing. You can see how that matches up. And then the fuselage along here, just for an idea of relative sizes, it's, a, it's pretty close. My concern is the motor is going to be pretty far forward. I'll have to keep an eye on that on the center of gravity, but this is all part of the design process. The final, oh, two, final, two uh, last things I want to point out. <clears throat> With a swept wing, swept wing design like this, the center of gravity is important. In the video for the design, I show exactly where the, how to locate the center of gravity here uh, based on the mean aerodynamic core. You'll see that in the video, but this will be the center of gravity for this model, which is a very important uh, aspect. Also, the swept wing, I've never made one of those on a foam board, so just as a test, I did this dummy swept wing design, um, just like with that model, I've got the foam ribs located here. And then what I learned is you have the uh, creases every quarter of an inch that are 90 degrees to the fuselage side, the root, and that seems to work out well as you do the bends around the uh, wing, wing ribs. The wing ribs are just a generic airfall shape. I'll be honest, I sketched them out just so they approximate a Clark Y. I think that's close enough for these types of models, but we'll, we'll find out with the real thing. So everything is all set. We can start cutting foam and then seeing how this model goes together. These are the park zone electronics that I'll, that I'll use for this model, <clears throat> the standard motor. This is the um, electronics brick, elevator, rudder. These are the plugs for the two separate aileron servos that I'll be using on this one. 
As I mentioned, I'll not be using the rudder, just the elevator, the ailerons, and the electronic speed control for the, um, for the motor. And again, this whole setup with the battery weighs six tenths of an ounce. It's just a, a wonderful thing. I printed out the TurboCAD plan's full-size top view for the wing and tail. This is the wing rib sketched out on the styrofoam and with one cut out. <clears throat> the wing center section that is flat out to the dihedral on the tips. Here I've cut out the wing ribs. I did make a modification on building it, keeping just the center ribs pitting the wing flat towards the end of the board for an airfoil shape in that ma manner. This is a completed fuselage, two plies of foam with the wing in place and the dihedral tips waiting to insert the tail surfaces. I completed the profile model of the F4 Phantom. Here it is, the other side. And we'll test fly it as soon as the weather permits. So let's take a look at what we did. Um, the park zone equipment is right here for the electronics. I knew there'd be a center gravity problem with the long nose, uh, the motor here, the center gravity located here for the swept wing. The center gravity location is key for the swept wing. It's on the video before. I'll show again the profile to the CAD drawing, or the card for the CAD drawing. Another build, I would like to locate this equipment much further back. What I have to do is just solder in some wires to the engine, to the motor from here to the controller so everything can be shifted back, the park zone equipment, the battery, as well as the aileron servos. But just to make this one work, I put it as far back as I could with the existing wire. The catch was I had to um, glue in, hot glue in the two washers to make it balance out. So that brought the total weight to 2.1 ounces. I'd very much like 1.7 ounces, but I can live with a 2.1, uh, just a, a discussion for a future one. The fuselage is two widths of the foam board, 3 16 inch wide, as necessary for rigidity. The fin and rudder is just a single sheet of the foam board, 3 16 inch wide. Notice on the front view a little bit of the anhedral, the tail where they uh, droop down, characteristic of the F4. What I did with that, because you can't have a common elevator, I had to create a horn on each elevator half, a Y uh, fixture in the wing, and then what I did, the two wires come together, and then with heat shrink uh, tubing, I keep them all in one. So this elevator servo through this one push rod does this half of the elevator, this half of the elevator, with the guide, uh, the, with the guide tubes in place to keep from flexing. So that works for the elevator. The ailerons are just ailerons with the aileron servos. Again, they're further forward than I would like. It was just necessary for the wiring. Again, that's fixed with a longer motor wire on a subsequent version. Probably the biggest thing I did change as I was building it was the ribs for the wing. You'll notice that there are two root with two root or ribs here glued together. Okay, so this is strong for two. I was going to put a rib here and a rib here, but I just wasn't getting the wing to lie down flat on the board to do this. So I just made the decision. If you look carefully at front, you can see that there is an airfoil shape here that goes out to a flat end tip at the um, midsection of the wing. So this is an airfoil shape along here, and then it flattens out along here. And then for the anhedral, uh, for the dihedral tips, I just glued those in place with a little dog tooth um, in the wing. Again, this dog tooth on the rail R4 is to, is to prevent uh, span-wise flow of the air of the airflow over the wing just for control. So that's going to be the big unknown: how this wing structure with a single rib, then the flat. Uh, down on the board pinned with this is going to work out to keep to allow that wing to to shape the curve I did do the um, Scoring every quarter inch along the top of the foam just to let it carefully bend across the top This is flat here again. We'll we'll find out on the test flight how that works Also, if I were to do it again, you can see as the nose tapers down uh, to where the fire control radar nose cone is it's just not enough area for the motor. I, I would, if I were to build this again, just have one sixteenth inch plywood along here, just to give some strength to the nose. That's not as strong as I'd like it to be. So um, this is a completed model, weight two point one ounces. 
we know from experience with the other bottles 1.7 is great but you can fly at two ounces it has enough power and we'll see how it works in the swept wing center of gravity everything on this model three channels ailerons elevator and throttle control we'll see how it works so we have a break in the weather uh, we'll go ahead across to the park parking lot and see a test flight for the f4 phantom Okay, we're back from the test flights, and you can see from the videos it kind of sort of maybe flew. I think the takeaway of this whole thing is that the F4 um, could probably fly, but I think it's underpowered. I think the motor is just not enough power for this airplane. Now, what I think the learning point is on this, when I was experimenting with the Park Zone systems, this model with a 24 inch wingspan, 1.7 ounces, it flies great. And I have other models that um, are a little bit heavier. The, the, one with a fuselage that could weigh up to 2.2 ounces. That was the, the upper limit. And I think those weights and wingspans work well with a straight wing like we have here. I think those calculations are off a lot when we have a swept wing, which we have here. The swept wing on real aircraft, they're necessary for um, high flight speeds. Uh, as airliner, jet airliners are developed in the, um, or bombers and then airliners in the 1950s, 1960s, as airplanes move faster, faster towards the speed of sound, weird things happen with airflow, sonic shock waves, etc. that was mitigated, corrected to a large extent by swept wings. That's why all high-speed jet aircraft have swept wings. The problem with swept wings is they fly well at high speeds at altitude. They do not fly well uh, when they're down at uh, low altitudes. So typically the wings will have very complex leading edge slats, flaps, trailing edge flaps to make sure that the plane is controllable at low speeds and, you, and you're absolutely trained to fly very stable approaches so that there's no maneuvering going on. So I think what had happened was, even though this plane came in at 2.2 ounces, remember to get it to balance at the CG center of gravity, I had to put in these two washers at the back to balance it. So it balances corrected at this point. I think due to the swept wing, even though it weighed 2.2 ounces, it has to fly a bit faster, quite a bit faster than the straight wings to fly properly. So the plane Planes flew okay, they were somewhat controllable, but um, just underpowered. The good news is with foam board construction, you can build it quick. I built this entire airplane in a day. So the search will get on for some sort of higher power source, and we'll see if we can get a better success. But the plane is just gonna fly faster with a bigger engine, and I'm not gonna fly it in that parking lot area. It'll have to be out of the field and just, just go straight for a while before we start doing any turns, and then we'll see what happens with that. So again, it was a good learning experience drawing from the plans, building the airplane, 2.2 uh, ounces with this motor, not enough to swept wing, and we'll see what happens next. Thank you for watching.